Good afternoon. Thanks for joining us today in our third session for our fire relief fundraiser, third and final, I believe. So we are very excited to host three companies today who have very charitably donated to various relief causes for forest fire victims. As always, this presentation will contain forward-looking statements. If you'd like to know more about those, you can find them on the company's websites. And there will be a Q&A section for each company, so feel free to input questions throughout the presentation. Our first victim today is Randy Turner, who is CEO of Independence Gold Corp. Uh, Independence is a new story for me, so really looking forward to, to hearing the pitch. And one of my former bosses is on the board, Terry Solomon, who's a legend in the business, much like yourself, Randy. So nice to meet you. Maybe you can tell true. us a little bit about Independence. Uh, thank you, Deborah, and, and uh, thank you, everybody. Um, I'd first like to uh, start off by thanking Adelaide for inviting me to speak. And second, I'd like a to uh, let people know that we're donating toward the Maui uh, Fire Fund. I have a special connection to Maui. My mother lived there for 25 years and just south of the Lahaina area. So spent a lot of time there over many, many years. Been there at least uh, 25 times. So uh, that's where we'd like to our, dedicate our money to. So uh, the picture you're seeing right now is actually the Three T's Camp, which is located in central BC. And this is what you get when you work in an area that's been devastated by the pine beetle forest fires. And now we're starting to see some of the fall colors that are coming in. And there's our camp just below. So just corporate uh, summary of the company is really, we have a very strong uh, technical and leadership group. Uh, we've been involved in many deals over the years in various commodities, financings that have been worth over $2 billion. So our primary assets really that we're going to talk about today is the Three T's project located in central BC near Prince George. There is a resource on it right now. There's about 550,000 ounces of gold, 13 million ounces of silver. So based around that, there's almost uh, 700,000 ounces gold equivalent. It's located in a very friendly jurisdiction uh, with uh, First Nations uh, up there, we have good uh, rapports and, and good uh, dialogue with the local b uh, bands. Uh, the property is actually located 16 uh, kilometers south of the Artemis Gold uh, project, uh, where there's about 11, 11 and a half million ounces. Uh, we can speak a little more uh, in a minute about that project. Um, but the three T's is really a, a series of high grade vein systems. We call them epithermal veins, high-grade uh, gold and silver, uh, a series of them, and it's located about 16 kilometers south of the Artemis Gold. So what we're looking at here by drilling and uh, carrying out the field work that we've done over the last few years is to increase this resource uh, to potentially up to a million plus ounces. So we do have a couple other assets, one in the Yukon adjacent to the coffee deposit of Newmont, and then we do have another uh, project that's a, attached to the three T's, sort of more grassroots. So one of our major shareholders is Newmont Mining. There's the sort of the corporate summary. Everybody can see it there and really the financings that we have done. And uh, the current share price is 12, 13, 14 cents, depending. Um, and But there's 130 uh, plus million shares outstanding. So the directors and management uh, own about 7%. So I mentioned Newmont has about 10 and the rest is public. I am the, the largest single shareholder uh, as a, with over 8 million shares. So I believe in putting my money where my mouth is. So, so here is a, a really just a, a capture of some of the, the uh, board members. A lot of us have worked together for years. Uh, John McDonald, who is uh, sort of my two to IC, he and I have worked together for over 40 years. Uh, first at Esso, then uh, with a company called Windspear, which discovered the Snap Lake Diamond Mine, and then the original uh, predecessor to uh, Independence Gold, which was called SilverQuest. Uh, Darcy Maroud is on the board. Darcy and I have worked off and on for 35 years. He was with Homestake and recently left as Senior Vice President of Yamana and now runs a company in the in Nevada called Western Exploration. 
Michael McPhee. He was the um, uh, president of the Mining Association and now runs a very successful environmental and First Nations consulting group. So that really works well with us in dealing with the environments uh, within BC. Terry, as uh, Deborah mentioned, uh, used to run Salmon Partners, and he's one of our uh, sort of key directors. Uh, Harry Chan is our CFO, and Louis Montpellier is a lawyer, so he likes to keep us on track when it comes to corporate governance. So the three projects, as I mentioned, the Boulevard and the Northwest Territories, three T's, which we'll really focus in on, and the Laidman Project, which is adjacent to the three T's. So here is the, the areas that I'm going to be talking about. But if I sort of give a little bit of history to this area, uh, back in 2003, uh, I was running a company called SilverQuest. I'd been a shareholder in this company since the mid-90s. Uh, we acquired what is now the Blackwater Deposit, the Three T's Deposit, and the uh, Capoose. So at one time, this was all under the umbrella of uh, of SilverQuest. And about 11 years ago, uh, we had farmed out part of the Blackwater deposit. And in the end, New Gold took us out and the partner, uh, Richfield, uh, for about $750 million. They left us with the, uh, the three T's project. Um, the history, of course, New Gold uh, spent most of their time down in Rainy River where they are, ended up turn around selling this project to Artemis Gold three years ago. And now Artemis Gold is developing this 11 and a half, 12 million ounce gold deposit. So the infrastructure is out there. You can see Vanderhoof. And because um, Artemis is developing the Blackwater deposit, the infrastructure out there, the roads uh, is you know easy to access. Uh, Artemis just spent 1.2 million upgrading the road. We have another 12 kilometers of road to get to our place, which is fully graded. So Prince George, principal city up there. So it, uh, as far as logistics go, it's very easy to get in and get out of. So really we we have here is a series of veins, which have were originally were discovered by Tech, Phillips Dodge, and Kojima. So over the course of many years, back in the early 2000s, I put together this entire package by taking it a, and doing deals with uh, with Tech, with um, Phillips Dodge, which is now uh, Freeport McMoran, and Kojima, which is no longer around. So we put together the land package because we like what we saw as far as the vein systems go, the grade of it, and the potential to develop it. And it, as I said, we also had acquired the Blackwater deposit at that time. Next slide. So as you can see, really a series of north-south uh, trending veins. Uh, the longest, the biggest vein right now would be the Tommy vein. It's uh, over 1,100 meters long. Uh, it's still open on both ends. It's still open at depth. Uh, again, the Ted Mint vein system, same thing, about 1,000 meters long, again, open on both ends. And recently, we just discovered a couple of new uh, veins, the Ian vein, the Johnny vein. And part of this was just because of good field work, good geology, and uh, putting together a model because about 75 to 80 percent of this project is covered by glacial till. So the obvious ones, the Ted Mint and the Tommy, are they, they're outcropped. So you can see them. The other ones have been found by uh, good exploration, by trenching. Uh, and by doing field work. So this will just kind of give you an idea um, really what it looks like. We have a, a dike that cuts through the middle. So the resources that we have reported, say in the Tommy vein and in the Ted Mint vein are all above this sill that cuts through it. So the all both the, the Tommy, the Ted Mint, the Ian, the Johnny, and the other veins are still open at depth. They've never been uh, drilled to the, to uh, to their final depth. Uh, we would say that some of the drilling we've done is only down to 300 meters, but the majority of this is 200 meters or shallower. So when we've done this resource, we've actually done it uh, using a company called SGS, a worldwide uh, analytical and resource company who have put together how you would perhaps do a potential mining of this. So they've outlined two pits really over the Ted Mint, and the Tommy, 
and the resources which are outlined on the table below it, basically where this number comes up, almost 550,000 ounces gold and 14 million ounces of silver. So equivalent, gold equivalent, uh, using about uh, almost 700,000 ounces. So the drilling that we have just recently carried out has actually indicated that these pits, particularly around the, uh, the Tommy, can be expanded and have been expanded by doing out, step out drilling. Uh, so the focus of our last drill program was really to look at the Tommy pit. And, uh, and as we move forward in other drill programs, we're going to be expanding both that and the Ted Mint um, veins, uh, potentially open pit situation. So metallurgy is very important uh, in, in when you're looking at these type of deposits. So the uh, we've had we've done a number of metallurgical tests, and as you can see, we're almost 98% recovery for gold and 96% for the silver. So when we're looking at the grade, which is a, the overall grade, which is running around five gram gold and 75, 80 gram silver, we're really recovering almost 98% in, in what we've done so far in metallurgical testing. So that's, a, a, I think, really important as we move this project forward. So not only looking at the grade, the ounces, but also the metallurgy. So all those tick the boxes right now. So as we, um, we move forward, we're going to be doing more drilling and adding to the uh, potential resource of this project. So one of the big unknowns in this uh, these type of deposits is where these veins are sourced from. These are called epithermal veins. And it appears right now that we have, doing geophysics a couple of years ago, outlined a major porphyry target below the Tommy, the, uh, the Ted Mint uh, systems. And so we like to look at this as this is the big source area, uh, porphyry area, which has never been tested. So I, I've indicated there where this sill cuts through. So nothing below that has ever been tested. So one of the objects of the next few drill programs is to drill to depth, to look at this, where these, uh, is this a major porphyry system? Are these veins sourced out of this? Which we would say it certainly does indicate that. So uh, there's a lot of unknowns, a lot of grassroots, and a lot of upside uh, potential for this project area. So. Uh, and, and, and this slide here is really, again, more of an extrapolation of the geophysics that we've done. And what we see here is there's a lot of other zones that have never been tested, uh, mainly because everybody in the past focused on the Tommy, the Ted Mint systems. But we've outlined through geophysics other potential targets. Uh, if you look in the um, the north or on the, or the right uh, nor column or right part of the picture there, where it says Utsa, there is an area that we have just announced here last week uh, that there is uh, copper mineralization, silver mineralization, the first time we've ever seen it in outcrop. So another um, area of exploration potential uh, over to the uh, to the west side where we see this, uh, all these numbers A, B, and C, those are veins that have been uh, outlined veins that can be tested more. And then on the very south, there is another brand new target that has never been uh, explored at all. So uh, a lot of upside, a lot of uh, grass fields exploration that can be carried out um, on this area. And as you can see in the picture on the uh, of the rock, that is azurite malachite uh, mineralization that's uh, been discovered recently uh, in the Utsa area. So, I say, and, and so this is really just uh, an area that we staked here last year to add on. We see it sort of as an area that has similar geology. Um, it was it's never really been explored, never really been looked at, um, but it is the same bath lid that Capoose silver deposit hosts. So uh, we've just carried out some field work out there. We have no results back yet, but it's early days, but it also gives us a bigger land package a bigger position within the three T's camp. Okay, so finally, it's our uh, our boulevard project, which is uh, located adjacent to the coffee deposit in the uh, in the Yukon. We worked on this area for, for many years uh, and Gold Corp came in and did a private placement into us 
um, when we first started off uh, as they were had acquired the Kamenak coffee deposit. So we have got, not, not done any exploration on this project for the last couple of years, but it is a, a key um, area that uh, sort of fits in with the coffee, the white gold district. And we'll wait and see what happens there. But right now, our main focus really, as I've said, is in 3T's project. So I think that's, uh, and, and this will just give you some of the ideas of the, the work that we've done, some of the intercepts that we've had the geochem that we've done. So there is gold, there's uh, mineralization there, near surface and at depth. So there is a lot of potential there, but we have not been uh, focused on this project that I said for the last few years. I welcome any questions if anybody has it. Thank you, Deborah. Thank you, Randy. Sorry about that. My video wouldn't start for a second there. <laughs> That's okay. So yeah, thanks for the overview and uh, any audience participants, if you have questions, feel free to uh to input them in the question box, but I'll get started. So I had a question just about infrastructure availability around the 3Ts project. Can you give us a little bit more information about that? Yeah, our, our main uh, access into the area is from uh, Prince George into the uh, to the Vanderhoof and so. So it's about a three hour drive and it's an all year round road. Of course, Prince George is a major airport. And so we have year round accessibility and now with, of course, Artemis developing uh, the Blackwater deposit, and they've got 450 people out there right now, and they plan to go into production by the first half of next year. There's a lot of activity going on out there, uh, big camp out there, the mills being assembled. So uh, it's very easy, accessible into the Three T's area. And since you brought up Artemis, are there any geological similarities between Three T's and Blackwater? They are both uh, epithermal deposits. Uh, they are uh, what we call low sulfidization. The real significant difference between it is the grade. The grade at Artemis is about 0.75 grams, and ours is four to five grams. And we have a very large silver component, and Artemis is not it. So our average grade of silver is 75 grams uh, plus. And so that's the Geologically, they're about the same age, but there's definitely a, a difference in the, in the grade. And one is more low grade, ours is much higher grade. And can you remind me when the drilling season commences and goes till? Yeah, we, we can actually drill year round. Uh, the, the drilling is uh, because of the road accessibility. Uh, there is no issue um, at all. And we have drilled year round, you know, typically, most companies shut down over uh, Christmas and, and in December, early January, but we can drill year round. So our season this year, really, we we're out there in early January, February, and we're still out there in the field right now. And how many meters are you planning on drilling this year? Well, yeah, um, we're just working on our drill program right now, but typically we like to do anywhere between four to 5,000 meters in each program. Uh, we did a 4,100 meter program earlier this year. So, uh, and we tend to work only with one rig, but uh, we're starting to see that the potential out there to actually be using two rigs, um, which uh, as we're looking at a lot of these grassroots targets. So uh, we would uh, probably say that it's, you know, there's a potential out there to be using that, but four to 5,000 meters is pretty well standard for us at a goal. And what kind of turnaround times are you seeing right now on the assays? Oh, they're much quicker now. I think with a the slowdown there has been uh, last couple of years, of course, it was very slow, very painful, but we have a very good rapport with SGS, our analytical lab that not only have done our resource, but uh, we use them as a lab. So the turnaround time is anywhere between six to eight weeks for, for complete assay. So uh, we're seeing it much quicker than we certainly, the market did see a few years ago. Yeah, I think activities yeah. down across the board. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and then talking a little bit more about the drilling. So which vein is the drilling currently focused on? Um, yeah. Which veins are you uh, including in the, or, sorry, and which veins are included in the 2022 resource? Uh, both the, the Ted Mint vein and the Tommy are included in that resource. But this past drill program, we focused strictly on the Tommy. And going forward, we will do some more drilling on the Tommy. There was uh, very wide space drilling, so we did some infill drilling. 
but it's never been drilled to depth. So we see a big potential drilling it to depth because, of course, it's got it overlies what we saw was that big porphyry uh, potential target. So uh, we plan to do extension drilling and more deep drilling uh, within the Tommy vein. And then also touch on the Ian and Johnny vein, where which we discovered here this past year, and we had some great results uh, on that as well. So these are two major veins that had never been tested, never been looked at in the past. So and one is about 200 meters west of Tommy, and the other one's 400 meters west. So like I say, there's a lot of blue sky out there for further exploration. And do you still have a number of holes pending from the past program? No, uh, pretty well everything that we have is in the public domain. What we don't uh, have back yet is we've just completed a major soil program out there, a uh, sampling program. This is all part of the uh, ongoing work that we've been doing this summer. So we did a lot of chip sampling, a lot of prospecting, a lot of soil sampling. So none of that is back yet. So some of it is probably just going in this week into the lab. So there is still more information coming. Okay, great. And you talked a little bit about the potential for a porphyry target at depth, but I didn't yeah. actually catch how deep that was that you've drilled so far. Uh, well, we've only touched the top. It's really only about 300 meters down. So it's not a, a, a deep rooted system. And based on the geophysics that we show, we'd say that there, there's a potential there for a porphyry target and one also over in this new area, Utsa, where we've got the copper uh and silver mineralization, and that one appears to be much shallower. So about 300 meters for the, the one on the west, 200 meters on the one on the east. Okay, and talking a little bit about it, so could you go into how the mineralization is different? You covered it a little bit in your presentation, but could you dive in a little bit deeper for us? Uh, yeah, in, in a vein system, we tend to get uh, sections which are running, uh, you know, continuous four, five, six gram. And there's some sections where we've run 10, 12, and up to 25 gram gold. So whereas in the, the system at Artemis, it is very finely disseminated. So there are a couple of high grade sections in the Blackwater. We know Blackwater because we worked on Blackwater uh, years ago, but there is definitely a, you know, a, our vein system is much higher grade. Of course, you don't have the big bulk tonnage that Artemis has. It's more confined to the veins that we've outlined. Okay, I appreciate that. Yeah. Uh, and then you you referenced some of your major shareholders. Maybe you could talk a little bit about them and how you finance the company to date. Yeah, our uh, we've probably financed uh, over the last few years with flow through here. Of course, we can in Canada, uh, but over the last two major financings are. Uh, main financing has come out of Switzerland, Belgium, and the U.S. Uh, so those are all hard dollars. Um, and uh, in fact, we would probably say there's probably 75% European and American money in the last financing as opposed to 25% uh, for flow through here in Canada. So uh, it's you know, a number of institutions, a number of private uh, high wealth individuals that have uh, put it in, and um, so that's the um, uh, that's really the the basis. And the directors tend to, if they can, participate in all financing. So that's uh, that's really where the bulk of our uh, fundraising has come from. And I had an audience question, which is: besides Artemis, with obvious synergies, are there others now looking at your project given your new discoveries? Um, we have had, you know, various majors have knocked on the doors over the years. And I think it is uh, relatively because then a Cacho Plateau has been relatively unexplored compared to uh, a lot of BC. It's in a very friendly jurisdiction as far as uh, working with the First Nations, the environment out there. So, yes, there have been people and there have been other companies out there exploring of state claims to the north and south. but. Um, yeah, we have certainly have had discussions with other people. And one final question, Randy. Um, yeah. So maybe you could talk a little bit about what news flow is expected over the coming months and potential catalysts for the company. Yeah. Yeah. Well, so, well we've got results coming in from the summer program. But it, it, the and in our last press release, we stated that we would be 
uh, announcing a drill program. We're just finalizing that uh, over the next few days uh, to uh, putting together our drill targets for a program that's probably going to start within 10 days. So once the drilling starts, of course, there's news that's going to flow with that as well. So we're in the stage right now of picking drill targets, not only uh, within our own staff, but working with SGS too, to how we can add more resources to the, the current resource that we have. So that's sort of what's going to be happening over the next short while. Great. Well, I really appreciate the overview, uh, Randy, and your support okay. of our fundraiser. Okay. Um, congratulations on the discoveries that you've had recently and uh, good luck on the next program. I appreciate, appreciate you giving me the opportunity and good luck with everybody in the raising money for the fire. It was a tough year for everybody. So thank you. Yeah, it's been a horrible year. But yeah, thank you for your support and uh, look forward to catching up with you again soon. Okay. Thank you. Bye.